So I'm repelling and I have to pass a knot that is joining these two ropes together, but there's nowhere to clip to them. So what if I had a clipping point by having two ropes joined together with a butterfly knot? Is this safe? Is it useful? And what happens if I have two different diameter ropes here? The only way to find out is if you go to the most useful place to find information, which is the comment section of Rope Test Lab. So someone asked for research on using this as a bend to join two ropes together in a caving context when you're only using one series of ropes to go down, if this is okay. And the comment section was very full, uh, <laughs> but we didn't see any testing on this or what this knot in this context is called. We tested a butterfly bend in an earlier episode, but that's where the butterfly got just two tails sticking out. Yeah, it's a much smaller knot than this, and we weren't super impressed with it because it was quite a bit weaker than just a double fisherman's. Oh, it slips at nine. Uh-oh, our core shot. Oh no. Oh no. I know it to be a Windows cleaner knot and I believe it to be banned in rope access. So there, there was lots of confusion of people thinking this was a rope access specific question and that this was being used as a, an anchor point. What's wrong with this being an anchor point? I guess that's why we're here today. Okay, so it's against regulation or it's not against regulation or maybe it's not allowed in the UK or it's being taught as acceptable. Wow, there's a lot of argument about a knot you can't even Google. Uh, our splat level one just expired, so <laughs> we're not an expert on that. <laughs> I used it a lot. But I didn't see a list of knots for that that were banned. So it looks like Rich Carlson prefers a rethreaded figure eight on a bite. If only Rachel would chime in and tell us what she thinks. Oh, we're in luck, she left a comment. I don't understand why you wouldn't use a Flemish bin with one side as an eight on a bite, and that is, a totally valid way of doing this probably. But I think this is easier to untie. Yeah. Because butterflies and bolins are easy to untie. A fisherman's knot is not easy to untie. Let me show you what I mean. We rope swing, swing. <laughs> rope swung it off of this and I couldn't untie it so I decided to brake test either side to see if it would break in the knot. It's a strong knot. It broke in the fresh figure eight first, but now it's permanent. So I saw this post before I went to Yosemite and climbed the Zodiac and we fixed three pitches which required two ropes and it went straight to the ground and we had to tie two ropes together and jug past the knot. We didn't know if this was safe or not, so we used it. We tied it together and then we tugged it and we're like, it seems fine. Now I'm excited today to test it to see if it is. Before we test it, let me show you how to tie this. You basically overlay these two ropes together to where it looks like this. So you can see here, I have about one imperial meter of overlap. So the first method I'm gonna show you is turning it twice. This is a common way to tie a butterfly knot. That hole right there, after you go under, is where you put those after you go underneath all of it. You don't want this too big. You want these loops to stay kind of small in order to be close to the knot if you are trying to clip into it. Let me show you the way that I do it, one wrap, two wraps, the third wrap goes in the middle, and then you take the outside wrap and go under all of this and pull it through, and then you tighten everything up. Now you may not wanna wrap that around your hand if it is tight, because it could squish your hand. We are going to do white rope on white rope because I don't have enough yellow rope. What's that smell? That is full strength. It didn't break in this knot, because this knot's still there at some level. It broke in the figure eight. Oh, definitely full strength. It's not science unless you do a sample size of two. Full strength, where did it break, Bobby? It broke in the other figure eight. There we go. Usually butterflies have broken a little bit less, but I, th I think it's because it's big. It's, there's a lot of material here. Oh, are you untying it? Uh, maybe. Oh, no, no, it, it'll go, it'll go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you just figured out if it was easy to untie. Should we do a quick test of the Flemish bin that people were recommending? Let's do that. Before we do that, let me show you something really cool. Those are a lot of ropes. Those are a lot of ropes. Here is a wall of ropes. Here's some more ropes. Here is a room full of ropes and you get a free butterfly any kind you want to tie with every rope that you buy here at hownotto.com.
some assembly required. Start with figure eight on a bite, rethread your new line. Let's see how this works on the slack snap machine. That maintained the shape better than the butterfly. This actually still looks dressed. Ah! It broke in this knot. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Ooh, is that less than full strength? Interesting. I think this needs a larger sample size. Two. Oh, that's even weaker. It's only 14 and a half kilonewtons. Which is interesting that when we add all of this more material in this re-threaded figure eight, it's weaker than a normal figure eight on a bike. Even though this is breaking stronger in our very few samples, no one needs the extra two kilonewtons. And if you do, get a bigger rope. Now, the figure eight Flemish bend on a bike follow through knot is going to be harder to untie than this butterfly knot. But not as hard as a fisherman's knot. But some people like fisherman's knots because they have a smaller profile and you're trying to maybe pull the rope down later in a climbing context or caving. Caving, you'd have a problem if you did that, unless it's a pull down cave. That if you want a smaller profile knot, use a smaller profile knot. If you want a knot with a clip and point, well, is this a good one? Because on El Cap, we went to go lower the bag on this joined rope setup. And to simulate this, I'm going to use my super good enough chuck bag. And we lowered it down and we got to the knot you have to pass. And it's really handy to have something to clip into so you can get the thing on the next side and continue. So let's find out how strong that thing is. So this is how we tested it before, but now let's pull on the butterfly. That's pretty good. Can we clip to the two eyes, Bobby? Uh, I would say yes, though you might make them bigger. What was asked in the original post was, can you clip one eye? So let's try that next. Had a different result. That's a different result and it did not break in the knot over here. It broke somewhere in here. There was a lot of movement in this knot. Is that the one that wasn't clipped? Yeah. Ah. Still stronger than a figure eight <laughs> Flemish thing. <laughs> Is this safe? I think we've answered that question. If you tie it correctly, I think it's super safe enough. But why? Why would you do this? That is another question that was asked. Let's go see if we can answer that. So if I'm rappelling and have to pass this knot, let's say in a big wall scenario or in a caving scenario or any scenario you have to pass a knot, you wanna transition your weight onto something else so you can take your rappel device and move it lower. I'm going to finish lowering myself to where that's tight. And you don't wanna to be too close to the knot because it gets sucked up in that. So that is now got me stuck. There's not enough room in my demonstration station for this. So that is why I want to leave enough room here in order to not jam into my knot when I try to take that off. So I want to transfer my weight onto that ascender. I put that on there. And this part is pretty straightforward for most people. You don't want to be on just one ascender or one personal anchor, especially this kind. What my options have been in the past have been to tie a knot below where I'm going to be and clip myself to that. So I have some sort of way, second way I'm connected to this. My other option is to take my other personal anchor that you probably don't really want to fall on and you could clip the butterfly knot. And that is one of the benefits you could do that or your cow's tails if you're caving. However, I'm just going to stick with this because I'm going to use that knot for something else that I'll show you that would be useful. So you want to take your rappel device and you want to lower it below the knot and so now I'm on that, but you can only suck it up so far, so I gotta get rid of all this slack here. And so if you don't have a personal anchor that has a push button that makes it really easy to deal with, then you have to somehow get your weight off. Now, what I've done in the past is I could take a ladder, and if this was a pencil evolve adjust and you have to take your weight off this to turn it, you can put your ladder here. But one actually useful spot is you could put it there, and you could tighten this up right here, so you're ready to go and you can stand up and you could just take it off and go all the way down like that taking this off and before i continue now that i'm on my grigory which technically is one point of contact of failure but whatever that is how you could use that butterfly knot so what i'm curious about is different diameters tied in this 
And what situation would that be in is maybe if this rope was damaged and I need to tie my tag line to it, and this is only an emergency use, expert only situation, um, I would wanna transfer my weight onto the same thing, same setup, except now I've got this five mil Biao backup line. And I wouldn't wanna use a Grigri on that for hopefully obvious reasons. But if I put in this ATC, what I'm curious about is if it would hold. You don't just put it in once, you put it in twice for redundancy. Super, maybe good enough. All right, now it is inappropriate for me to even insinuate that you can do expert use techniques on a YouTube channel. And so anybody who thinks that, I'm gonna make their brains explode here and show you things that you should never do. Z-Drag with four kilonewton carabiners. Please, never do that, this is for entertainment purposes only. But, now I can't reach that. If only there was a place that I could clip, untie, unclip that, and then hang on to my tail. It's holding so far. Take that with me. Not the smoothest repel, but it's holding so far. Shall we put that on the brake test machine to see when it slips? Hey, that's not bad. Where'd it break? In the knot. Wow. At a, that knot. It broke at a much higher force than I can achieve repelling. It even still looks like a butterfly. I wouldn't advise it as a bi-directional single attachment point. The knot has to swing in its geometrical triangulation under load that can wear down the sheave on particularly abrasive areas typical of splatter calcification. Bidirectional constricting as a result of cyclic loading can overstretch the fibers. I don't understand anything that was just said. Doesn't every knot stretch the fibers? Okay, just checking. Everything's bidirectionally loaded too. I don't know how you unidirectionally load something. Now you could tie any two ropes together with any knot that you want, but if you want to add a clip and point, you could do what Alpine Savvy did in his article where you just add a butterfly knot just above the knot. You could go check out his article if you want to see more about that. If you want to see what happens when you tie this wrong, we did a bunch of tests on it and you can watch that video next. Oh, damn.